before it's too late. If the future for our planet is to include any frogs at all, the battle has to be waged on two fronts. Ongoing research and education. So this is a frog that is good at climbing. So if you watch the way he can swing from my finger, even just by one toe. Can you swing upside down from the monkey bars by one toe? So at schools around yeah. Victoria, the lost frog's home hits the road. This frog has brown and green, the colours of the habitat that it lives in. It has huge webbed feet. Look at how big its feet are. That's the tip of its toe and that's its... By firing children's imagination and making the natural world fun, Jerry knows that his message will go way beyond the classroom. Imagine if Ian Thorpe had feet as big as this frog. His toes would be out to there if he was standing here talking to you. I think he's had two cockroaches today. There he is there. Students There's Julia Amdros and Annabelle Obergang are two who have taken the frogs to heart. After Jerry came in and spoke to us about green tree frogs, which come from Queensland, we decided to adopt a few of them. That one's Rubit and that one's Fredo. We feed them about three co cockroaches every day and it's really interesting watching them because they eat really strangely, they push their eyes down when they eat and it's really interesting. If a frog jumps on you, you won't get injured, okay? But if you jump up and down on a frog... The Children frog have a chance not only to grow up and be different, but to go home and impact on their parents. <laughs> their parents that have decisions in large companies to make, their parents who are politicians, and their parents who at home can make a difference by their practices. I didn't like frogs before Jerry came in and talked talk to us, except now I find them really cool. <laughs> At the Serendip Sanctuary, an hour's drive from Melbourne, big business and education have come together to create a 250 hectare, that's around 600 acres of wildlife habitat. With support from Alcoa and the Amphibian Research Centre, Serendip has created a unique hands-on approach to nature with their latest gallery, the Frog Room. Gee, well done guys, this is looking great. This, I feel like I'm in a frog swamp. It's a world of frogs, all alive. Yeah. Michael Hellman is Serendip's frogs. ranger in charge. Environmental education is the most important thing we really do at Serendip. It's about getting the kids here, it's the, the future. It's about exciting them about the environment and getting them to, to, to take positive action to change uh, our behaviours. We've put in place a range of things that, like this frog room, but also the, the frog pond, the ponding site, the habitat we have with brogers and busters and things like that. And we're going to say to them, hey, look, we've got to conserve and protect, and there's no good sitting back. If you can fascinate somebody and show them a creature, they will bond to that creature and they will want to preserve it. They can find out later it's in trouble, they can find out later how they can help it. But the first thing to do is absorb them with the creature and get them to understand that this is a magnificent thing to take an interest in. At Serendip, they hope their work will change perceptions about the environment. If they can show how simple their frog program can be, then they believe it can be done in many other places as well. The best time to hear and see frogs is at night, and Jerry is on his way to check out a half a million dollar rehabilitation program. Can you pop that tape on for us, please, Gina? And at the same time, do some field work into locating other disappearing species. It's a lovely night for looking for frogs, and uh, we're finding a few on the road, but I can only be in one place at one time, so that's why we started the Melbourne Water Frog Census program where hundreds of people, in fact about 300 community volunteers, are now out there recording uh, frog samples. And at the same time as I'm looking for endangered frogs, I can be listening for endangered frogs everywhere in the state. And that's a fantastic way of picking up new information. We've got uh, brown tree frogs calling there, Latoria Ewing guy. There's probably at least 25, so we'll put a 25 plus for those. And 
probably 25 plus for common froglets as well. There's quite a lot of common froglets calling there too. One of the biggest problems in battling the chytrid fungus is the speed at which it strikes, decimating entire populations in a matter of months. Scientists are resigned to the fact that the fungus is here to stay, but there remains one hope for the future. <laughs> 